Hello, this is Mike with a video to respond to some questions that folks have had over the last few days related to working with functions and uh, evaluating functions at particular values. So uh, I'm here in Desmos. There are links to Desmos in my open math um, in the start here block, uh, or you can just navigate to desmos.com. You can also just use a regular old calculator, um, a graphing calculator, uh, but since we're in an online class and this is a free online graphing tool, uh, I encourage you to make use of uh, Desmos. There's also a free mobile app that you can download from your App Store or the Google Play Store. So I'm here in Desmos and I just want to show you some things about uh, evaluating functions. Uh, because it's really, really important to understand how functions work in order to understand calculus. So there have been lots of questions over the last week or so about how to evaluate functions. And so um, some functions, uh, especially at the beginning of Unit 2 and uh, when we go into Unit 3, some functions are going to be uh, given like a difference quotient. Uh, as I mentioned in, a, in another video, the difference quotient is really just a slope calculation. So y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The difference quotient really is just a slope calculation, uh, but it's written in terms of functions. So the y2 is uh, this function here, f of x plus h, and the y1 is just the f of x. So that's the y2 minus the y1. And then when I hit another set of parentheses and say divided by, I can say the x2, which is x plus h, minus x. And if you simplify that, the x minus the x in the denominator cancel out, and you're left with just this. And that's where the difference quotient comes from. It's just a function version of the slope calculation, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. It's really, really important for everybody to understand that the difference quotient is just a function notation version of the, of the slope calculation. Now, some folks have been confused about how to use the function notation in the difference quotient. And so, for example, not really being sure what to do with the f and the x plus h and those kinds of things. And there have been some questions about uh, similar issues in later on in module two. And so I want to try and resolve some of those things here. So let's say you have a function. Um, one function that comes to mind that some folks have been asking about looks something like this. Uh, I think it's something like uh, you know, cosine of 7x minus cosine of 10x, sorry, and then uh, divide all of that, and put parentheses here, divide that by x squared. And so the graph you can see looks like this. It's kind of a crazy looking graph, but we're actually more concerned with just evaluating the function. So if you were just using a regular calculator or a, a regular graphing calculator, you could simply type in the x value that you want. So if you want to evaluate the function at x equals uh, 0 0.4, for example, then all you would do is you would take the value 0 0.4 and you would plug it in uh, for x into the function. And so I can literally just retype all that stuff in. So I can say cosine of 7 times 0 0.4, and then I can subtract cosine of 10 times 0 0.4, and I can divide all of that by 0 0.4 squared, and I'll get the answer negative 1.8036, or negative 1.804. Okay, so you can type all that in, but one nice thing about Desmos is that I've called this function f of x. And there are ways of handling this with a TI or a Casio calculator. You can create tables uh, that make this a little bit easier. And I can show each of you individually how to do that, or there are plenty of videos on YouTube for how to, how to make that happen. Um, but I, I want to show you how to do this in Desmos. Again, Desmos makes a lot of these things much easier. 
Uh, because I've already called this original function f, I can use that in another line here. So in line three, I can just say f of 0 0.4, and I get the exact same value that I got when I took all the time to plug it into the function itself. So Desmos actually does a lot of that work for us. Now, if I wanted to find other values, I could just simply type in f of 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, say, and it'll give me a different value and so on and so forth. But if I want to create a table in Desmos, that'll actually make this process even faster. So uh, the last thing I want to do is show you how to do that in Desmos. And so again, I can type in the function. I can just type in each individual number and get an answer coming out. Or I can use the tools that the calculator provides. And one of those tools is to uh, create a table. So I go here to the plus symbol. I'm going to add a table in to this line. And where it says x, x sub 1 and here y sub 1, I'm actually going to uh, call this something else. I'm going to call this f of x sub 1. And the, I get the sub by using the underscore key. And so when I type in x values in here, 0 0.4 for example, notice I get that same number that I got before. If I type 0 0.2, I get the same number that I got before. And so I can just, uh, I don't even have to type in the f anymore. Now I can just type in whatever x values I want. So any, any old number I want, I can create a table. And if I want to see what happens as I get closer and closer to a particular x value, let's say I want to see what happens as x gets closer and closer to 0. Uh, then again, I can say 0 0.4, 0 0.2, I can say 0 0.1, 0 0.01, 0 0.00001, and you can start to see a pattern in the numbers. So when I'm far away from zero, I, I don't get uh, very close to anything, but you can see as I get closer and closer to zero, my values uh, appear to be approaching a particular value. Oops. 0 0.00001. You can see that uh, those values seem to be getting closer and closer to 25.5 something. Okay, and those are the uh, ideas that you want to be following in this early section uh, of sections of Unit 2. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, but as always, if you have questions or concerns, please post them in the forum or send me a message.